Welcome to RBC's Markets in Motion podcast, recorded July 24th, 2023. I'm Lori Calvacina, Head of U.S. Equity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets. Please listen to the end of this podcast for important disclaimers. Two big things you need to know. First, actively managed long-only funds are underperforming their benchmarks for the year in most of the U.S. categories we're tracking, with small cap value emerging as a bright spot. Second, the cross currents for U.S. equities are getting more complicated based on what we're seeing in our high frequency indicators. If you'd like to hear more, here's another five minutes. While you're waiting, a quick reminder that you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple and Spotify. Now let's jump into the details. We'll start with takeaway number one on performance. Our charts of the week tackle a question we've been discussing amongst ourselves on our team. How is the performance of actively managed long-only funds looking, and what has been a highly confusing start to the year for the buy side? The answer is that it's been pretty tough. We reviewed the cumulative 2023 performance of actively managed funds tracked by EPFR in several different large cap and small cap categories, and compared those returns to the passively managed funds in the benchmark universe. We found that large cap funds that benchmark to the S&P 500 have been lagging in 2023, and that the gap between actively managed and passively managed funds widened significantly in the second quarter. Growth and value managers in the large cap space are also having a hard year. We saw similar trends for funds that benchmark to the Russell 1000 growth and value indices. Things have been a bit better in small cap, though far from easy. Russell 2000 benchmarked funds are underperforming for the year, though to a far lesser degree than what we're seeing for their S&P 500 benchmarked counterparts. This is also the case for small cap growth funds. Interestingly, both small cap core and small cap growth funds have spent decent amounts of time this year ahead of their benchmarks, as their underperformance really took hold near the end of the second quarter. Small cap value funds overall have been the bright spot. Despite a rough start to the year, they began to outperform in late first quarter and have sustained that outperformance through July. Moving on to takeaway number two, our high frequency indicators illustrate how the cross currents for U.S. equities have gotten quite complex. On the negative side, individual investor sentiment continues to creep towards worrisome territory. Net bullishness hit 29% in last week's AAII survey. This indicator was sending a deeply contrarian buy signal for the stocks to start the year, and has typically signaled that U.S. equities are overbought when this indicator crosses 30% in favor of the bulls on a four-week average. So it's getting pretty close. Most of the other sentiment indicators we track still have room to run, but this one is worrying us nonetheless, as it's one of the ones that really kept us in the more constructive camp throughout most of 2023. Also on the negative side, the U.S. has gotten expensive relative to Europe. This is another data point we can put on the reasons list of starting to worry a little bit. The weighted median forward P.E. of the S&P 500 is back to the peaks of the last few years relative to Europe. The U.S. had been looking more reasonably valued versus Europe to start the year, and we think that helped support some of the strong moves we've seen this year, but that condition is simply no longer in place. Also on the negative list, funds flow are starting to shift a little bit. U.S. flows were strong in the second quarter and resilient in the face of inflows to bond funds, but they have started to fade. When we dig deeper within the U.S., we see that growth funds are now seeing outflows, while value funds are no longer seeing flows get less negative. Small caps, once again, are a bright spot, with flows improving for all styles. And we're also seeing flows improving for both active and passive. Within small cap active, blend and value funds are showing the best trends recently. Moving on to the more positive cross currents, near-term economic expectations have continued to improve. Consensus real GDP forecasts for 3Q23 on a quarter over quarter basis have now moved into slightly positive territory as recession fears have faded. Also, leadership within the market is starting to shift. Banks, including regionals, are starting to outperform the NASDAQ 100 a bit. Within large cap and small cap, sectors like financials and energy are starting to outperform. Growth is also stalling relative to value in terms of style within the large cap space. And small caps themselves are starting to outperform large caps. Many of these non-sector trades had been hitting the extremes seen in recent years that foreshadowed past inflections. Overall, recovery and cyclical trades seem to be back on track, which is keeping the broader market moving up for now. That's all for now. Thanks for listening, and be sure to reach out to your RBC representative with any questions.
This content is based on information available at the time it was recorded and is for informational purposes only. It is not an offer to buy or sell or a solicitation, and no recommendations are implied. It is outside the scope of this communication to consider whether it is suitable for you and your financial objectives.